Hey, welcome back to It's Kind of Personal, the podcast where we explore queer sex and love. I am your host, Danny, a sex coach and big old queerdo. And today I want to talk to you about initiating sex. Every single one of my clients so far has come to me with the problem that they want to have more sex, but they don't know how to initiate. They want to be having sex, but they just don't know how to get the ball rolling. They're nervous. They say they're awkward. They're afraid of making their partner feel pressured or gross or any other thing. They're afraid of triggering their partner's trauma. The list is really endless on why people struggle to initiate. And I want to shed some light on that today. It's going to be an exciting one. You may think that you just need a new way to initiate, right? You've tried maybe buying some lingerie or some sexy clothes and surprising your partner. You've maybe texted them some flirtatious stuff, maybe some emojis. Maybe you have looked across the room and trying to give them like the look and either they don't pick up on it or they ignore it and you feel rejected. Maybe you've straight up been like, hey, do you want to have sex? Maybe you're going for that direct communication and it comes off flat and you end up feeling rejected and bad about yourself and wondering if it's you, but you don't know how to fix this problem and you feel frustrated and stuck with this situation. There's this baseline of understanding how your partner likes sex to be initiated and how you like sex to be initiated. So maybe one of you likes a fast initiation or a slower initiation. Maybe one of you likes to initiate by offering to do something for your partner, like, hey, I'd love to go down on you right now. Maybe one of you likes to initiate by saying, hey, I really want you to fuck me, right? You're offering to receive. So there are a lot of different options and flavors of initiation. So that's the very, very surface layer of considering all these different initiation techniques. And I want you to know your initiation preferences, but I also want to go a layer deeper. The problem isn't that you need to learn more initiation techniques. I believe a lot of the hesitation and awkwardness really stems from is that you are initiating without self-trust, which gives off this uncertain, like lukewarm energy. So I love a good illustration. So let's think about it like this. When a dog comes up to you with its tail between its legs, it doesn't really know whether to trust you. It's trepidatious. It wants to meet, to go toward you, but it's also kind of holding back. And your, what's your first reaction to this dog? It's to take care of it, right? To show concern like, oh, are you okay? It's okay. Offering comfort because you're an empathetic person. So approaching your girlfriend or partner with um, this tail between your legs energy when it comes to sex elicits caretaking which is great in some contexts, but it certainly isn't sexy. And honestly, this isn't your fault, right? You're not doing this on purpose. There are past experiences that most of us have had that can create this nervous, uncertain, scared association with expressing desire. And some random like flirty text message that you can send your partner that you saw on Google to spice it up isn't going to fix that. So what are some of these experiences that can create this fear and hesitation around initiation? I'll speak from my own experiences. I used to be married to a man and men are socialized to lean into their desire to express themselves sexually, to go after what they want, quote unquote. So oftentimes they're always initiating, making the first move, making overt um, asks or flirtation. And I was just used to receiving that, like, okay, you are you want to? Sure, that's fine. I never had any literal practice initiating, stepping into my desire and finding a way that feels good for me to express it. So that's problem number one. And problem number two, I, most women that I talk to, myself included, have had an experience where we're out minding out in business and a man hits on us. And we, it's very clear that we're not into it, right? Our body language is saying we're not into it. Maybe we're looking away. Maybe we've literally said, hey, no, thank you. And there are circumstances where they just keep going, right? They keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And you feel this um, sense of violation. This person like is not respecting your boundary. 
And that feels fucking gross, right? It makes you want to crawl out of your skin and then bury yourself in a hole and die. And when you've had those experiences, understandably, you're scared of then making a partner feel that way, right? Because that's the last thing you want is your partner to feel gross and violated and turned off by you, right? Because you love them. So that is another layer of, oh no, I know what it feels like to receive desire and it's unwanted. What if I do that to them? And so we just end up not doing it at all. Or when we try to initiate, it's like, it's that hot cold. I mean, do you want to, I guess? It's like a that upward inflection, like, do you want to have sex tonight? There's no confident, self-assured, self-trust saying, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I want. Are you into that? So when you have self-trust, this enables you to confidently feel, um, own, and express your sexual desires. And without this self-trust, you feel scared to bring up sex, so it just kind of never gets brought up. Or again, you initiate and it's kind of like a shoulder shrug, lukewarm initiation, which is confusing. And like we said before, that uncertainty isn't sexy. There's no confidence in there. And this is what I believe is one of the biggest hurdles to initiating in women living women relationships because of how women have been socialized to take a back seat, to be the receiver, to not connect with our desires because it makes us a slut to not express what we want sexually or we're too into sex and that makes us dumb or a bimbo. So we have all these messages that have taught us to disconnect not only from our desires but from vocalizing and sharing our desires with someone. When I first started dating my girlfriend, um, before I had been trained as a sex coach and a sexologist, our sex communication was less than zero. We were both operating on what we thought we should be doing and this really showed up in our initiation or lack thereof, right? So I noticed that I was too scared to own my desire for wanting sex, right? I was too scared of um, how rejected I would feel if she said no. So I would I would start to feel turned on and then I would maybe start slowly um, rubbing her leg. I would maybe give her a certain look. I would really just not say anything, but in my mind, I thought I was being super clear that I wanted sex. And then the longer that, that this would go on without her picking up on it or like reacting to it, I would feel more and more rejected. And so I had this, um, feeling of rejection and shame and frustration bubble up in me over the minutes that passed, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes that passed. And I'm still like rubbing her knee and like thinking that she knows what I'm trying to do. Um, and so till eventually I just like kind of get up in this abrupt, like huffy way and go to the kitchen. And then she'll be like, oh, something wrong? I'm like, no, nothing's wrong. But she can tell that my energy is weird. My energy is for sure weird because I feel rejected and ashamed of my desire. Um, and later when we got the skills to t be more explicit about anything sex related, it turns out that she didn't even know that I was trying to initiate most of the time. And when she did have a sense or a feeling, she was waiting for me to continue escalating, right? But I was scared to escalate because I was afraid she would say no. So she felt this weird, why are you rubbing my knee for 20 minutes type of energy. She felt like confused because I wasn't, I wasn't moving it along. So she wasn't exactly sure what I was trying to do. Um, and so it was just a mess. And then on the other side, um, I felt more confident initiating when I was drunk. I just felt like, oh, I can, I can just really go for it. So I leaned on that a lot too, which also isn't very useful in the long term for my relationship. So it can be really tricky because putting your desires out there is vulnerable already, right? Asking for what you need is already a struggle in itself for most people. But then add the, the complicated, emotionally charged landscape of sex and asking for sex can feel especially vulnerable. So I want to acknowledge that 
this can be hard and scary, but it doesn't have to be as awkward or as sheepish as you may have felt so far, right? We can change that. And that's the most exciting thing. If, if you're not happy with something in your sex life, we can change it. So chances are the volume of your self-trust has just been turned down by those past experiences, by the socialization of culture. So you just need to figure out how to turn the dial up on that self-trust so you can hear it, tune into it, and then express it. So I call this the body trust process. You trust that your desires are inherently pure and not predatory. You have that trust that you are lovable and desirable apart from your partner's reaction to your initiation and that you have the ability to handle quote unquote rejection and not let it affect your self-worth and you trust that you have the skills to apologize or repair if your initiation is not received as you would hoped or if you misread something. You trust yourself to handle all of the possible outcomes and get to the other side of the initiation intact no matter what happened. So your goal with initiation should be to clearly express your desire without expectation, without pressure, without a sense of entitlement to your partner or their body. And this is what I help my clients do. Together, we connect to your body so you can feel more present and relaxed about initiation instead of wondering in your head, what's going to happen? How are they feeling? Oh, I saw their eye twitch. Are they, are they hating this right now? Right? We can get stuck in the mental loop. Being present with the body is a way to combat that and really be in the moment and read the energy with your partner. And then my clients and I work on releasing and rewiring stress responses that are related to those past rejections or past negative experiences around desire and initiation and sex so that you still feel desirable even when your partner says no and that no doesn't make you want to crawl in a hole and die. And then we also replace sex negative beliefs about your desire being predatory, wrong, gross, objectifying, all those negative ideas that culture feeds us, we toss those out and replace them with confidence and empowerment and self-trust. So this is just one piece of my authentic intimacy framework. The next step is to really discover what turns you on outside of the shoulds, what you should want, what you're supposed to want outside of performing and removing all the shame from what really turns you on. And this makes initiation even easier because it encourages self-acceptance. It's a beautiful thing when I have felt in myself and when I see clients be able to build the self-acceptance and really not see themselves as weird or broken or a freak. That way, when you're initiating, you have this deep confidence that your desires are acceptable and that they are good and that they are arousing and you're not weird for being turned on by what you're turned on by. And the final step is connection. So it's easy to read a step-by-step of this is how you do something on the internet or I'm even sitting here telling you this is how we do it. And learning through reading is great and that's one thing but that's really the first stage of learning a new skill is gathering that information and a lot of people just stop there and when you are trying to build sex and relationship intimacy skills you need practice so part of my cutting edge approach is the confident connection method and that is where in session with me we will practice the skills that you want to improve upon so we'll practice how you would initiate We can practice talking about what turns you on and teaching you to be curious and empathetic about what turns your partner on. We can role play that conversation. And this is the science-backed fastest way to learn is through experiential learning, right? We are practicing in real time. Then I give you expert feedback about how present I felt you were, how much I could feel your energy, how much I felt you listened to me. 
I get to give you that feedback so we can refine your skills. And then so when you go out into the real world and practice this with your partner or a lover, you don't feel like you're a baby giraffe learning to walk for the first time, right? You feel that confidence. And again, that confidence will be felt in your initiation and you'll be able to own your desire, communicate it and speak it because you've had that practice. If you want to learn how my authentic intimacy framework can help you book a call, I have the link in the show notes. We'll identify what's holding you back in your initiation. I'll give you a step that you can take today to level up your intimacy and your initiation. And then I'll outline for you how my authentic intimacy framework can help you long term to build confidence in your initiation and in all other areas of your sex life. And if you want to hear more from me, tune back in next week and we're going to talk about how to keep the spark alive. <laughs> what are you doing?